Hi there, this is Andrew calling from Thumb Together. I'm sorry to bother you. I was just hoping I could talk to you about this movie, okay? Do you have five minutes? Yes, you do. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Thumb Together. My name is Andrew Fantasia. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and give some love to that subscribe button as well. Today, we're going to be talking about Sorry to Bother You Together. In a nutshell, I don't care for it. The end. Okay, okay. You want to hear a little bit more than that. Uh, here's the thing. I am all for weird movies. I have nothing against the concept of weird. Weird is good. Life could use a whole lot more weird. But sometimes, like everything else, weird has its moments where it goes up to bat and it swings and it does not hit the baseball. And that's what I felt happened in Sorry to Bother You. The concept of this film sounded ingenious. The idea of a telemarketer who, in order to make sales, has to put on a dorky white voice so he can relate to his customers or whatever. That sounded brilliant. And for the first 20-25 minutes of the movie, I thought, you know, it was going to go a certain way. And I was down for that because I really liked what the writer-director was trying to say there. You know, I get it. I get what he's going for. L let's not kid ourselves. Yes, I did not like this movie at all, but it is a very smart movie. There is so much going on in the subtext and even in like physically in the background of certain shots that I'm sure there's going to be people writing essays about this movie for like the next 12 years. So I'm not writing this off as like some dumbass movie that you shouldn't waste your time on. Like if you consider yourself to be a very intelligent person who pretty much gets everything, like nothing goes over their head, then I would say, yeah, watch Sorry to Bother You because you're probably going to get a lot more out of it than I did. The thing is though, what this movie lacks that it really, really needed was focus. And what I mean by that is this. There was a point very early in the movie, I'm talking at most halfway through the movie, at most, if not earlier, where I was sitting back in my chair and I said to myself, remember when this movie used to be about telemarketing? That's how out of control Sorry to Bother You gets. Everything you've seen in the trailers with the, you know, the telemarketing and he's phone calling people and using the white voice, that is a fraction of what is going on and at the end of the day, that has very little bearing on what happens overall to the character. Oh, I don't know. Oh, this movie hurts. I do want to bring up some of the really cool things that I loved, which was, you know, this whole aspect of selling stuff over the phone and just how absolutely soul-sucking it is to work for people like the bosses of this company. And, you know, the whole promise, there was one, one of the supervisors kept making promises, like, if you sell enough, you become a power caller. And he kept pointing at the ceiling as if to indicate, you know, the power callers who were on the floor above us. They're like, Jesus. Like, it was so creepy and just, just an evil, wretched place to work. And, you know, anybody who has worked in retail or sales, you know, we've all been there. We know these places are real. That's not an exaggeration. So I really liked that satire. I really liked what Boots Riley was doing with that. And the white voice stuff was funny too, you know, it was really fun social commentary about how this poor guy is trying to make a living and in order to do that he's got to pretend not to be black and they did some really clever things with the actual phone calls themselves that i really like from a directing standpoint because when these telemarketers call you it's so invasive what boots riley decided to do was every time the main character cassius called somebody the camera would make it look as if Cassius had teleported into their home and was speaking to them like right up close face to face like this as opposed to just him sitting at a desk with an earpiece on. That's really clever. Unfortunately, I don't think they did anything with it other than one poop joke and one sex joke. That technique is a weapon. That is a weapon of mass destruction in the movie's favor. And they did not utilize that weapon at all. It's like they had a AK-47 in their hand and they tried swinging it like a sword. They, they did nothing with that. They did absolutely nothing. And, you know, he's making calls throughout about half of the movie and I think we only see him go into people's houses like four times or something like that. So it's like they're just throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks at this point. There's another thing that really bothers me. And now this is just me. This, this is my own personal gripe. Apparently, I'm in the minority on this. Uh, go figure. But I really 
really hate when scenes end with a fade or a dissolve. I I hate that so much. It it makes me cringe. It's so unpowerful. It's instead of a scene ending with a bang, it ends with a squeak every time that happens. And this movie ended in a lot of dissolves, like a lot. And it just it really bothers me. Just ending with a cut is so much more powerful. It's a fraction of a fraction of a second, yes, but for that fraction of a fraction of a second, you're jarring the audience a little bit. You're giving them a little bit of like, you know, they're waiting, they're waiting, what's going to happen next in the scene? And then, oh, oh, okay, we're moving on. As opposed to a dissolve, which just, it's like, okay, what's going to happen? And nothing's going to happen, and now we're somewhere else. Oh, I hate them so much. Oh my God. And apparently I'm in the minority. So when Sorry to Bother You's first dissolve happened, and it happened in like the first four minutes, right away I was like, oh God in heaven, it's going to be that kind of movie. And it was. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe dissolves are the best thing in the world. But as far as I'm concerned, they are cringeworthy. They are absolutely atrocious. Keep your dissolves away from my eyes, please. For the love of God, please. Now, like I said, there was a point in this movie where I said to myself, hey, remember when this used to be about telemarketing? I stand by that because there are two plots. Actually, no, scratch that. There are three plots in this movie. And I'm not going to do spoilers in this review because it's really not worth it. So I'm not going to spoil in depth what the other two plots are. One of them involves horses. Now, if you've seen the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But there is a subplot in this movie that takes up the majority of the back half of the whole film that involves horses. And I'll tell you what, whatever it is you're thinking right now that this subplot about horses could be, I guarantee you, you're wrong. That's not it. And now what you changed yourself to be thinking, that's not it either. Trust me, you have no idea what is going on involving horses at the end of this movie. You don't. But needless to say, this is where the weirdness gets uncomfortable? I don't even know. Again, this is another good idea that is... Completely separate from the telemarketing thing. It is a cool, albeit creepy and weird idea that probably would be more at home in like a Black Mirror episode or dare I say a Simpsons Treehouse of Horror episode. And it comes out of left field, but they just don't do anything interesting with it. They really don't. They set up this thing where it's like, okay, now we have this character who is a clear villain and we need to let the world know that he's a clear villain because he's doing terrible things to people. So how do we do that? And the characters form up and they're like, I have a plan. And then there's a riot and there's chaos and we don't see this plan come to fruition at any point as far as I could tell. There's just chaos and then the main character gets knocked out and then things happen and there are horses And then the movie ends. Oh, and also, throughout all of this, there was another subplot involving Tessa Thompson's character. She is the girlfriend of Lakeith Stanfield's character. And at one point in the movie, and this is not really a spoiler, trust me, Tessa and Lakeith get into an argument, and she breaks up with him. And another character in the film starts trying to hook up with her. And that subplot goes nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. There is no point to it. It doesn't result in anything. The characters don't confront one another about it. It's just like, yep, yeah, that, that was a thing that happened and now it's not happening anymore, so don't worry about it. And also, horses. Sorry to Bother You is a roller coaster built out of very, very good ideas that I absolutely adored. Except the teenager operating the controls of that roller coaster didn't quite understand how the controls worked, so it felt like he just sort of pissed all over the control unit and just let it take its course however it should go. It is a well of ingenious material that just does not get tapped. It just sits there stagnant and it's like, look at this smart thing. Look at this smart thing. We're not going to do anything with it, but look at it. There it is. Isn't it neat? Here's a character with an eye patch who has no name. And when people say his name, we're going to bleep it out because quirky. Does he have anything to do with the plot? What plot? There are three, and none of them really end or do anything. Horses. We've all seen movies like this before, 
the best way I can describe them because you know there's a bunch of them it's just it's one of those movies that just has that presence to it every time a character opens their mouth and says something every time an edit happens or somebody reacts to something you're sitting there and you're th just thinking no human being could have made this movie this movie must have been made by aliens who were just observing human beings from afar and is like I think they're like this Am I right? What really frustrates me was it's not even like a train wreck, like a spectacular train wreck of bad, like Birdemic or The Room. It's a bunch of, like I said, great ideas that just kind of got dropped into a toilet and we just have to watch them float for a hundred minutes. And that is even worse because you can't even enjoy the badness at that point. But you know what? Maybe people out there do enjoy this and I hope so because I get what Boots Riley is trying to do and I respect that. I respect you, man. I respect that you're making this really clever satire on a bunch of different topics, including horses, and maybe it just didn't reach my brain the way you wanted it to. So I hope there's a lot of people out there whose brains took it in the way you wanted them to take it in because I know that there is something important that you're trying to say with Sorry to Bother You. It just got lost in translation on my end. But if you're in the right mindset and you are willing and open for anything and you can ignore totally pointless plot lines and dissolves, buy a ticket to Sorry to Bother You. What's the worst that could happen? So that has been Sorry to Bother You. That's Thumb Together. My name is Andrew Fantasia. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you here next time. Until then, adios.